All right, gotta hold my beer first. Totally unnecessary and out of tune piano intro there, uh, but I think Scott Joplin rig time. It's okay. Hi there, Coach Sage of SageRunning.com here with another training talk. Today we're going to talk about how to determine uh, your race pace, whether you're doing a marathon, half marathon, 10K. Uh, we'll leave it to the longer distance races, maybe an ultra marathon. Uh, on trails, it's obviously harder uh, compared to a, a road course or a track course, uh, more of a flat course, when you're actually going for a very specific pace and time and trying to gear your training maybe several months out uh, on what a realistic race pace goal is. And uh, I'll mention some variables first that kind of go into it as well as considerations. Uh, but the first thing is whether you're doing you know, 10K, half marathon, marathon, uh, you have to look at several variables, uh, most likely your history in running, how long you've been running, whether you just started uh, this year or a couple years ago. Uh, you're relatively young, probably if you've only started in the last couple years, uh, you probably don't have a huge mileage base compared to someone like me who's been running for uh, basically two decades year round now who's run extremely high mileage over 100 miles a week, 160 kilometers per week. So maybe you're running 50K a week, 30 miles per week. Uh, maybe you've run a bit more than that, but that mileage base kind of determines, uh, in a sense, how much stamina you'll have for a longer race. Uh, and I'll give you an example of, of why that stamina and speed endurance is important, as well as building your aerobic profile, um, becoming a more efficient runner. But it takes time and you gotta be patient, uh, especially when you're moving up to these longer distances. The other thing is a genetic component. You know, so you might have more fast twitch muscle fibers versus slow twitch. You might be coming from a sprinting background and you might be uh, better relative at, at the mile or the 5K or the shorter distance events compared to a marathon. Uh, likewise, it might be the other way around. If you're someone like me, you're kind of slow twitch and you can't sprint very well, uh, but you're, you're way better relative at the marathon compared to your 5K time or something like that. So there are some genetic differences uh, and it depends on your training history, your race experience as well. But the first thing is to determine, and I learned this a long time ago when I read the first edition of Jack Daniels' Distance Running Formula about 15 years ago, uh, is when it, the first edition came out, it's the newer, one of the newer editions, uh, is that you could use relative recent race performances to kind of determine your current fitness as well as project your goal fitness. So for example, on the, the chart here in the book, and you could access this online, Run Smart Project, uh, there's a lot of running calculators all over online. Uh, and they, they use different algorithms to kind of uh, determine equivalent race performances and say, oh, well, if you run, you know, this for 10K, you'll run, you could run this in the marathon. So example out of here, uh, 40 minute 10K uh, is about, well, 39.59 10K, they'll say is equivalent to uh, 128 half and a 304 potential in the full marathon. Uh, now, if you run a, a 40 minute flat 10K, that doesn't necessarily mean you're gonna run 304 in the marathon. Uh, you could run 330 in the marathon, right? You have to train specifically for the marathon. You probably won't be able to do it on, on low mileage uh, and you might not be able to do it uh, ever if you're more of a sprinter background and you're, you're all fast twitch. Likewise though, on the flip side, you could also say there are a lot of 304 marathon runners that maybe haven't cracked uh, 40 minutes for the 10K yet either. Uh, and moving down, you could say, oh, well, that's equivalent to a, a 18 or a 19, 17, 5K. Well, uh, if you're not really speed oriented, maybe you're a 304, you could be a three flat out marathon runner and maybe you haven't cracked 19 minutes for 5K. But it kind of depends on the training focus and genetics. But uh, it, it is it makes more mathematical sense to say okay you're probably not going to be able to run a 304 marathon unless you've run under 130 in the half marathon now there are a lot of examples of athletes uh, that we've coached and, and runners out there that will set their PR in as a half marathon split during a full marathon but they probably hadn't trained specifically to reach their potential in the half marathon first, and they probably hadn't raced a lot of half marathons. So the more experienced you are, the more uh, years or decades of, of base building and, and running and racing and, and uh, 
workouts that you have under your belt, as well as the more race performances that you have under your belt, the easier it is to kind of equate and project uh, what your what a realistic PR pace is or goal marathon pace might be, and you could even do that 16 weeks out or 12 weeks out on a training cycle. You know you're gonna you have a, a current pace and you have a date pace or. You have your, your your current date pace and then you have your goal pace and over the training cycle the goal is to increase your fitness so that you will be able to an oh my my phone just went off over there um you will be able to have uh increase in fitness so you could hold a faster pace for the marathon and and have it be a, a realistic goal that you're training for uh and using relative prs or race performances is a great way to do that as well as these tables now assuming you're watching this video uh, you maybe don't have a lot of races under your belt and you don't have a decade of high mileage weeks under your belt So it's it's a little harder to say it's a little harder to say and what you're going to have to do is kind of play it by ear During your training during the months leading up to your peak marathon race or half marathon or 10k uh, And you know you could throw yourself into some races uh, During that we generally don't like athletes to race a ton in a, a focused Marathon buildup, but you you know maybe you do do some 5k or 10ks or shorter distance races to kind of get an idea of where uh, you know your your interval pace might be or where uh, you know certain workout paces. Likewise, doing hard workouts, doing you know a session, we'll say for example five times a kilometer, five times a kilometer around 5k or 10k pace. Well, you might not know exactly what you could run for that, but you start doing the workout. Uh, and you're trying to hit these times and either it's too hard or you, you do it well and you could average uh, a fast time for those kilometers, well, that's a good indicator kind of of your fitness. You do that workout four or six weeks later and you're able to do it faster, uh, that shows a progression in fitness and then you could adjust your goals accordingly because you're adjusting your training accordingly to a faster pace and a higher intensity as well as trying to extend that, uh, you know, maybe you're doing five times a kilometer but then the next month you're doing four times a mile or four times 1600 at basically the same pace that shows a really good uh, progression and improvement because it's all about trying to extend that speed endurance and that comes through consistent high mileage and a lot of aerobic based training usually for these distance training events so uh, using relative workouts and again the charts do that that's kind of the whole basis of Jack Daniels uh, V dot tables uh, as well as other running charts you see all over online uh, is using current fitness to kind of project hey, this is what your lactate threshold or tempo run pace might be. This is what appropriate intensity might be. And it's also a work output. You know, if your goal is to run a Boston qualifying marathon or to run under uh, three hours in the marathon, you know that you have to hit uh, 652 per mile pace in uh, a lot of workouts. Uh, and if you can't do that in shorter workouts, you know, how are you gonna string it together for 26.2 miles all at once? Uh, it's gonna be a lot harder. So there are certain indicator workouts along the way that will kind of help you narrow down what your what a realistic goal pace is to start out in. Because you don't wanna start out too fast in a marathon and you're gonna probably crash and burn. And uh, you kind of learn this through trial and error. But uh, again, relative fitness, experience, uh, and indicator workouts. Now, indicator workouts for the marathon are usually the longer workouts, right? Uh, and I'll give you an example of a lot of people work out at a level way higher than what they could race at. And, uh, you know, when I used to run the 5K a lot in high school, high school cross country, I was, I was able to do some really pretty fast uh, f kilometer repeat workouts, five times a kilometer all under three minutes, 255 average. Uh, it would be a hard workout for me to do now. And, but I couldn't run under 15 minutes for 5K. I was low 15 minute range, 15, 20 uh, in high school, but I was doing these workouts. I could even do eight by a kilometer and, and run under three minutes, but it was too hard. It was too hard. It was actually like harder than a VO2 max workout. It was basically all out, uh, fastest possible average. Uh, so I was doing workouts that weren't at the level that I was training at. Now, if I did five times a kilometer and average under three minutes, I know I could crack uh, 15 minutes for 5K because I have more strength and endurance and a lot of years of high mileage training and know my body a bit better. But, you know, the, the same example went through college running. Uh, we'd run these crazy monster workouts, but then we wouldn't be able to put it together on race day. So it's better to train at usually a more conservative level and then hope that you are racing at a higher level at a different level. But that being said, indicator workouts for marathon, uh, generally the long runs and the longer repeats and the longer tempo runs are more of an indication of what you're going to do in a marathon rather than the shorter 800 meter repeats or, or kilometer repeats and, and things like that. So it uh, depends on the specific event that you're training for. Likewise, even half marathon, 
Uh, things like two mile repeats or 3200 meter repeats uh, with a short rest are usually a better indicator of what kind of uh, pace your lactate threshold might be or what kind of pace you might be able to sustain uh, for a, a 60 minute or a, a 90 minute race all out in good conditions. Now the good conditions part is also important because these VDOT tables, uh, relative race performance tables, are taking into account did you run this race, uh, did you pace your 10k or 5k uh, race well? Was it in good conditions or was it hot and humid? Was it on a flat course or was it on a hilly course? Uh, were you, you know, having stomach issues? Did you not feel very good? Uh, was it really a hundred percent effort? Because you want to compare relative performances usually in, in pretty good conditions. Say, well, you know, in ideal conditions on a flat course, good weather, I paced it well, I got the best out of myself, I ran this 30 uh, or 40 minute 10K, uh, you know, now to run a 304 marathon off of that, I'm gonna need specific marathon training, I'm gonna need high mileage, I'm gonna need uh, a good fueling strategy, and I'm gonna also need a flat course with good weather conditions and to pace it really well. Uh, so you have to kind of take those relative performances or workouts, for example, uh, indicator workouts, uh, with all those considerations in mind, and that's going to help you kind of narrow down uh, relative workout paces, but also your your goal race paces. And hopefully, the the process uh, through training through blocks of, of weeks, your fitness usually progresses through blocks of three to six weeks. You could notice a big bump in three to six weeks' time. Uh, you might have a training block of twelve weeks or sixteen weeks leading up to your goal race. Hopefully you'll see a big progression in fitness during that time and then when you taper for the race you're at, at your peak. So that's kind of the goal. Uh, but yeah, you do have to be realistic with paces and try to narrow it down and it's it's a crapshoot. It's a moving target sometimes. I've messed it up in the past for sure. Uh, it's usually better to be more on the conservative side and start off a little slower because you could always speed up in the last 10k of the marathon if, if you started off too slow. Uh, usually it's more of a struggle about trying to hold pace in the last 10k of a marathon. but. Uh, that's how you know you maxed yourself out and got the best out of yourself and trying to reach your potential in the sport. So thanks so much for watching, guys. Really, really appreciate your support on here. Uh, feel free to comment below with future training talk topics that you guys would like to hear about and vote them up uh, if you think they're, they're popular and you like them. Thanks so much to all the Patreon supporters. Thanks for subscribing on here. You can check out our coaching website, sagerunning.com. Uh, subscribe over there. Check out more videos on our playlist. Thanks so much, and see you next time.